Dear students of class 8A and 8B, welcome to my history class. This lesson is actually a part of uh, a syllabus of final exam. But still, I am teaching this lesson. Why? Because of the characters of some important persons of India, which are analyzed here in this lesson. This is very important to understand. I am... Uh, uh, that's why I have decided to uh, teach this lesson earlier. Only one lesson I shall teach earlier from the syllabus of final so that you can gain some ideas about uh, the Indian personalities and then I take back and start teaching uh, syllabus, uh, teaching lessons as per the syllabus of second unit test. Okay. Now first, Sambhat Kaumudhi. What is Sambhat Kaumudhi? Next point, Arya Samaj. What is Arya Samaj? Next point, Swami Dvayanand Saraswati. Who is Swami Dvayanand Saraswati? Next point, Satyat Prakash. What is Satyat Prakash? And last point, Principles of Vedas. What are Principles of Vedas? Now I am going to discuss. First point, Sambhat Kaumudhi. What is this? Sambhat Kaumudhi actually was a journal. It was a journal published during the age of Radha Ramon Roy. And uh, from that particular journal, the good works, the good activities of the British were not criticized but pressed in order to encourage the works of the Britishers. During the period of Raja Ramon Roy, many Indian intellectuals became, you know, the followers of the British. Why? Because during that time there was no uh, aggressiveness formed among the Indians. Since the Britishers were not as aggressive as they uh, hated Indians and they uh, did not make any kind of reforms or any kind of concessions for the Indian people. Not like that. Raja Ramon Roy, when he started his career as an educationist, social reformer, he saw that the intention of the British was very good. The British did not want to deprive any Indians from being uh, uh, treated equally because their reason they uh, wanted to do something better for the people of India. And Raja Ramon Rao believed in a theory that I would like, believe in the theory that uh, I would do something in return for what you have done for me. This is the theory of Raja Ramon Rao. I shall do something in return for what you have done for me. This is the theory of Raja Ramon Rao. And he also openly said, uh, that when something wrong is done, the person doesn't admit that it has been done by somebody else. That means it is supposed to have been done by somebody else. Now who is there? Who is there? The somebody else is never, is never identified. That means one person, that means what did he mean to say by, his, uh, by saying this, saying that? He meant to say that Whenever someone com someone committed any mistake, you would never admit that he himself was responsible for that, uh, for that, uh, you know, mistakes. And by that way, the person who committed mistake, no one could recognize him that he, is, he was the culprit, he committed that mistake. Suppose one person murdered one person murder another one but he never admit, admitted that he was the murderer. Now Raja Ramon Roy was not only the admirer of the Britishers but criticals. He criticized the Britishers sometimes whenever the Britishers did not insist him on making any reform and obstructed the way of doing it so, he criticized them. But the Britishers accepted many of the reforms 
because during the age of Raja Ramon Roy, society was totally conservative and uh, there was no education, there was no culture among the Indians, they did not have any faith on the Britishers. So Raja Ramon Roy established a bridge, he uh, constructed a bridge between the conservative Indians and the Britishers. And then he, uh, he uh, recovered their former, he recovered their, their faith on the Britishers. The Britishers, that's why, became grateful to uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy. And each and every poem and his style of working was written in the book Sambat Tomodi and the famous journal sometimes published, sometimes criticized, sometimes wrote various uh, old uh, traditional system of India in order to encourage Indian people, the ideals of the Indian people, the ideals of the former, you know, uh, Indian uh, people, educationists, uh, writers, uh, you know, uh, and famous persons of India who sacrificed their lives who contributed something better for the uh, upliftment of our country. Uh, these are discussed in Sambhato Modi and Arya Samaj. It is another part, Arya Samaj. Arya Samaj, it was set up by Swami Dayanand Saraswati. Swami Dayanand Saraswati, who was Swami Dayanand Saraswati, he was also a scholar. Swami Dwayanand Saraswati also was a scholar. He also dedicated his life for religious movement, for the religious upliftment in the country. People during that period who had no faith on religion, he tried his level best to bring them to the mainstream of life and uh, ultimately he founded the Arya Samaj in the year 1875. The Arya Samaj now, what was his intention? He founded Arya Samaj. Why did he found, uh, Why did he set up Arya Samaj? He set up it in order to contribute the spread of education in India. He wanted to make the Indians educated and introduce Gurukul system of education there to import Vedic education among the Indians. The first Dhanan Anglo-Vedic school means DAV. Dhanan Anglo-Vedic school means DAV. School was founded in the year 1886 at Lahore and many more schools soon followed. He laid down 10 uh, principles, uh, sorry, ten, 10 principles of Arya Samaj and believe that the Vedas were the source of all the knowledges, all the knowledge, the Vedas, Vedas were the sources, source of all knowledge. His motto was back to the Vedas. What was the motto of uh, Swami Dhyanan Saraswati underlined? The motto of Swami Dhyanan Saraswati was back to Veda, Vedas, back to the Vedas. Okay. Who coined that slogan, back to the Vedas? Swami Dwayanand Saraswati coined that very slogan, back to the Vedas. The Arya Samaj accepted by everyone. The Arya Samaj gave important, equal importance to each and every people in the society, irrespective of their caste, creed, religion, gender. It became very, very powerful in Punjab and spread its influence to other parts of India in course of time. He opposed child marriage, felt that ideal marriageable age for girls should be 16 to 24, 16 to 24 years and 24 to 40 years for men, for girls 16 to 24 years and for men 24 to 40 years. He also opposed idolatry. He opposed idolatry, idolatry and caste system based on birth. He encouraged, 
intercaste marriages. He encouraged intercaste marriages, marriages and widow remarriage. He was very much sympathetic towards women. So those women who would become widow allowed them to remarry. That's why he favored widow remarriage. He favored widow remarriage. Though he was a religious, you know, reformer, although he was a religious reformer, yet he has favored, yet sorry, although he was a religious reformer, he favored advancements of, advancements in the field of education, in the field of science and technology. He wrote Sittat Pokas, which contained the idea of Sarajya, means self-rule. And that's why he wrote, he published Sittat Pokas and wrote many, many articles, uh, articles in that journal. And also he published a number of pamphlets writing that, that India which was under British control in future it would become a, 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 a become an independent country. That's why the duties and responsibilities of the citizens were reminded by Swami Dwayanan Saraswati so that in future they might shoulder their responsibilities, their duties. You know, he demanded self-rule. For the first time, he demanded self-rule of Sarajya. His writings later inspired freedom fighters and were instrumental in the spread of nationalism in India. Ultimately, the, uh, Swami Dayanand Saraswati's writings were not, ex were not uh, you know, were not uh, uh, recognized by the Britishers. They forbade him from writing the articles which uh, were harming the sentiments of the Britishers and the interest of the British rule in India. That's why he, he was warned by the Britishers for several times, but he didn't care for it. Hundreds of Arya Samaj Patriots were born in India, including Lala Lajpatra, took part in the Indian freedom struggle. It was, you know, Swami Dayanand Saraswati. He never, never cared the Britishers. He had no, uh, you know, uh, he had no other option to which he would stop criticizing the Britishers. But only one option was there, opposing the rule of the Britishers, criticizing the wrong principles, the wrong policies of the Britishers. That's why for the first time he demanded Sarajya, means self-rule, and encouraged a number of number of Indian a number of Indians who later became his followers, and as a result, they also you know formed separate groups in the name of Swami Dayanand Saraswati. Lala Lajpat Rai was one of them, who also accepted the revolutionary ideas and thinkings of Swami Dayanand Saraswati. He was inspired by the writings, by the articles written by Swami Dwayanand Saraswati and also decided to sacrifice his life for the sake of our motherland, our country, India. Up to this, my dear students. Next day, the remaining part will be discussed. So, this is the lesson I am teaching. In, uh, teaching once again, I would like to repeat you. After having completed teaching of this lesson, lesson number 12, I shall start, uh, you know, teaching the lessons uh, of backside from beginning to the last as per the syllabus of 
second to the test. This lesson is very important, that's why I am teaching earlier, so that you can gain some knowledge from this lesson. And, um, and, and that very knowledge if you will gain from here would become helpful to you in understanding the concept, the subject matter of the other lessons. Now I am going to start teaching.